Suicide Squad Isekai. I mean, the name speaks for itself. Hey guys! Sorry, I'm just Oh shit! Oh man, no, stop! Stop! Um, the fact that this is done by Studio Wit as well, who, if you don't know Studio Wit, they are a goated anime studio. They very, very rarely miss. Not only that, it is being written by the person who wrote ReZero. So I'm going to give this one a must watch. Yep. Don't adjust your screens, this is really happening. When I first saw this get announced, I had to double check that the date wasn't April 1st. All in all, this seems like just a fun, don't take too seriously type of show, giving us exactly what we'd expect. The Suicide Squad having a romp in an Isekai fantasy world. But I'm not sure if I was expecting a bit more coming from the writer of ReZero and animated by Studio Wit. A studio that has historically put out banger after banger. Because I'm not sure if there's anything else taking their focus. <sighs> yeah, this is pretty awkward. Okay, so check me out. The Suicide Squad Isekai. Or I guess I should say Suicide Squad Isekai, seeing how just the word the in the title of whatever piece of media this IP is attached to holds so much weight, is an anime that I briefly touched on a while back when the anime was just about hitting its halfway mark. A checkpoint or threshold in which is past the time you as an audience member should know where the anime is going, the quality of the anime overall, and more importantly, if you are into it or not. And well, as you can see by this thumbnail, we are definitely off to a rough start. And that's why I use Giguk, Garnt, or however you know this bloke, one of the pioneers and one of the top YouTubers and Twitch streamers of the anime community at the beginning of the video, hoping and praying that he does not copyright me. Please do not copyright me, because I think his overall appearance, expressions, body language, and tonal shift kind of says it all from what I believe is the majority of the audience members viewing experience. Because no matter how you look at it, Suicide Squad Isekai was just pretty mid. And unfortunately, while it does me no justice and gives me no satisfaction when I say this, it's an anime that kind of started off that way and never really hit the ground running. And much like how Giguk and I'm sure a good lot of the anime community who had relatively high hopes for this anime when it was first announced, I'm not quite sure if I just personally didn't receive it so well because I expected more because of my own pre-established bias towards the studio that was helming the project, the writer who has the storytelling of a visionary, and in my opinion has created one of the greatest pieces of fiction I have ever seen, with more to come just this coming anime season of Fall 2024 and ReZero Season 3, an absolutely stacked and incredible voice acting cast that was attached to this project, and quite frankly, a growing audience over here in the West when it comes to the engagement and overall investment and popularity of the genre overall. So don't get me wrong, I definitely saw the vision of what Warner Brothers Japan was going for here. I have mentioned many times throughout the lifetime of this channel that as someone who I would say is now a pretty seasoned anime watcher, and again as someone who has watched and witnessed firsthand the uptick in popularity that came with the genre when audiences here in the West found out what JJK and Demon Slayer was, not to mention the epic grip that the last season and couple of movies of Attack on Titan had on the world, Rip Aaron Yeager. So like I said, I definitely saw the vision of what Warner Brothers Japan was going for, but unfortunately, I just don't think the execution was there for me this time around, and I hesitate to say that it was a skill issue, or lack of talent, or blatant incompetency, because I have seen this crew of chefs cook up some amazing dishes in the kitchen before. The fact of the matter is, is that the Suicide Squad Isekai was just bland, and honestly, in my opinion, too meta for its own good. An anime that because of its own hubris, failed to produce a meaningful and cohesive narrative for the audience to attach themselves to, an anime so poorly paced that it fails to convey the direction or the tone that it's going for, pretty much non-existent tension and stakes, and what I would consider to be the worst mistake of them all, failing on the behalf of the genre of isekai, and creating one of, if not the most vanilla and tropey fantasy world this oversaturated market has to offer when it comes to highly marketed and mainstream isekai such as this. And this is all coming from an anime that was given the blessing from a writing perspective of not really having to care about character development, character growth, or building character relationships because that has already been premeditated for them from the source material. Unlike a manga being developed into an anime, or say to put more emphasis on what I'm trying to say, unlike a story being developed into an anime, the Suicide Squad as an IP is more of a character-driven IP than an actual story. 
Which is why it goes back to how I definitely saw the vision of what Warner Brothers Japan was cooking in the oven in terms of adapting these characters into a isekai and fantasy world type of setting, because when it came to the creativity and imagination of what you could really do with these characters, the possibilities were genuinely endless, which I think in my experience only added to the disappointment of the product I was watching unfold on my TV week after week. A truly unrewarding experience considering the anime that we have been blessed with this season in regards to sequels like the Tower of God Season 2 or Oshinoko Season 2, or just surprise bangers like Bye Bye Earth, My Dear Friend Nokotan, or The Elusive Samurai. But that's just how it goes in this community. You win some, you lose some. So with that, let's be quick about it and talk. Okay, so this shouldn't take more than like 30 seconds to a minute, seeing how I would think for the majority of us in the audience. This isn't our first experience with this crew of unalivers. The Suicide Squad Isekai follows our familiar characters with the addition of Clayface, as they are sent on a mission to establish relations in an unknown fantasy world opened up by Amanda Waller. Problem is, Amanda Waller is an absolute bloke unlike the smart character that they portray her out to be, with Harley and crew being the second Suicide Squad to be sent out after the first Suicide Squad went AWOL and joined the evil empire of the other world. Actually, before I continue, Man, I just realized throughout the entirety of this anime, they didn't even name the world that they were living in. The natives of this world, not like our dumbass bloke characters, but they didn't even name the planet, the country, the territory, a village, whatever it is that they reside in. Damn, what a half-assed attempt of an isekai. Anyway, with that, Harley and crew are tasked with the mission of not only to establish relations, but to now take out the AWOL low IQ crew that came before, and with a 72-hour, let's just say, seed implanted into their neck to ensure that the past mistakes aren't repeated, we watch as our Suicide Squad sets out on their isekai journey as they attempt to entertain us the audience with their blatantly disrespectful misunderstandings with the natives and high octane and to be fair, some rather incredibly animated action sequences before you realize that there's nothing really going on when it comes to the world building or the plot. Wait, I actually feel like I've seen this before. Oh yeah, I have. For those of you who have seen the anime, and I apologize for the PTSD I'm about to awaken in some of you, Seven Deadly Sins is the perfect comp I would have for Suicide Squad Isekai if I were to recommend either of these to a friend, which I wouldn't unless they were a true trash connoisseur, seeing how these are both anime that I would consider as digestible trash. A subgenre of anime that is best watched in a binge format so that you, the trash connoisseur, can just watch and soak in the epic action sequences bright lights, and colors in order for you, again, the audience member, to not realize that you're actually just watching an anime of dog shit dialogue, a vanilla and generic world, and lack of a cohesive narrative. But hey, those bright lights and animation sure is neat. And that's the Suicide Squad Isekai. I know I've been saying throughout the entirety of this video that I have been seeing the vision of where Warner Brothers Japan was coming from, but I have no idea what I was talking about. I have no idea how, when or why such a level of expense, care, and craft was thrown into making the Suicide Squad Isekai, and what a studio like Warner Brothers Japan even had in mind with what they were trying to accomplish in adapting such an idea. And while yes, in theory, you would think that more westernized high-octane and high-action IPs such as DC, Marvel, or even a brand such as Star Wars could find their way to coincide and gel with the more traditional style of anime. I'm just not quite sure if there's really an audience that's big enough to gamble on such an idea that I myself would consider niche in the first place. And while yes, the popularity of anime has risen dramatically over the last couple of years, even sparking major studios such as Netflix to hop back into the game of live action adaptations, of course to varying degrees of popularity and quality, the fact still remains that for every Demon Slayer, JJK, Attack on Titan, My Hero Academia to an extent, or even live action One Piece, how many people are still sticking with the genre after the seasons of those generational shows end? Just how many people are going out of their way to search for more content of the same variety? I wasn't quite sure when this anime was first announced, but by the look of it, it wasn't a viewership problem. Unfortunately, even with all of the talent that was behind this project, I just think we're looking at a skill issue here. But hey, what are you going to do? So in a ranking tier list that is still a name in progress, I mean... I'll just let the Annie list do the talking in this instance. It's no surprise that Suicide Squad Isekai finds itself going into the mid category. 
as well as just sitting besides the likes of Seven Deadly Sins Season 1. Yuck. And for all of the hope that is good in this world, if the Suicide Squad Isekai does somehow stumble its way into being renewed for a Season 2, then we can only hope and pray that it ends up going better than how we were treated in regards to the sequel seasons of Seven Deadly Sins. I honestly have no idea how I was able to finish that show with functioning brain cells. But like I said, it's in God's hands now. Of course, as always, I want to thank you guys for watching the video, and if you enjoyed, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. I'll leave a link to my Twitter and letterbox in the description below, just in case you guys want to go check that out. Again, I want to thank you guys for watching the video. Make sure to like and subscribe. If you did enjoy, why not click on more while you're at it? Otherwise, that is all the words I got for you today. Bye.